Hello, animation fans, and welcome to another iAnimate podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, and you're listening to episode 90. In this episode, we have an amazing guest. Uh, we're going to be talking with Alexi Renoy. Um, Alexi is head of character animation over at Fortiche, where they have recently released some of the last installments of season one for their amazing show, Arcane, with, uh, in conjunction with Riot Games. Um, if you've seen the show, if you've seen the music video, if you've seen anything on this uh, project, you will definitely want to check out this interview. Give it a listen. All right, all right. Okay, let's jump into this. Um, Alexi, I really, really appreciate you jumping in on this podcast with us. Um, I was looking back. Um, you've been one of our instructors for a long time now, and I think you were our fourth podcast. If I, Yeah, our fourth podcast back in 2013. So it's been a long time here coming. Um, that, and I think it was right after Rise of the Guardians um, over there at DreamWorks. So yeah, it's been a bit. Uh, I know you've done some stuff since that, which I want to get into. Um, we're going to definitely, definitely talk about Arcane. And uh, <laughs> I tell you what, in some ways, in preparation for this, it was going to be easy. And in other ways, I'm going, there is just so much here that I'm like, where do you even begin on something like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, the, um, the response on the Arcane has been amazing. Yeah. So last, I guess maybe uh, the first place to start is congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're at Fortish. We're super happy. Um, doing that was a blast. It's been uh, since day one. Um, creatively, something that's been... Uh, well, to me, it's a dream come true for every artist. You know, you want something graphic, you want something beautiful, you want something raw, you want something real, you want a drama, you want... So it crosses everything, everything. that the creators wants to do. And to me, that's why. So working on it was just a pleasure because of that, because you knew that you were going to do something different than what you always wanted to do in some way. Right, right. So now... Um... Sorry, we you, jumped right into our game. You might as well. I think this is this is probably why people are here to listen to anyway. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Okay, so we talked about that you were at DreamWorks. You made the move over to France, which is where you're from anyway, correct? Yeah, correct. So okay. yeah, I'm French. Uh, I've been at DreamWorks for 15 years, like 14 years exactly, but uh, my lighting is going away. Bye-bye. Sorry. <laughs> no actually, I don't know if it will come back up. Sorry. Well, it's going to be like If this. it goes out, it's nice. It actually looks better in the back. You've got a little dark uh, separation okay. there from the background. Is it okay with me? Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It's okay. All right. So, yes. So, sorry. Um, so, yeah. I've been 14 years at DreamWorks in the U.S. Really happy, actually. Yeah. I am American, too. So, I'm French and American. But I decided that I wanted to go back in France because I was missing my country, my family, uh, my culture, uh, a lot of those things. And when I arrived in France, um, the head of animation of Fortiche, uh, Bart Manuri, reached out to me saying that he has this project that he's working on that he would like for me to take a look at and maybe be a part of. He showed me five sequences from the episode one that you guys saw. Uh, so that first episode was done about five years ago now. Okay. So the whole style of Fortiche has been established for even, I would say, 10 years. It was the beginning of their style, even more than that. It's always been uh, Pascal and Jerome. Uh, those guys are the owners of Fortiche and Arno, those three guys. And they developed that style, that, that graphicness. The, also, the more adult things, uh, always pushing for very artistic uh, and graphic um, uh, images. So, so those guys, they developed that project. When Bart reached out to me, I was blown away. So I went to Paris and I just started working on, uh, on Arcane uh, as a supervisor. So you've been there for how long now? Uh, th almost three years, two years and a half. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, on Arcane in France, I've been here in France for three years and a half. Okay. So that that was the first company you went to after moving from. Uh, no, I went to DNEG where I worked a little bit on Ron's Gone Wrong for just the pre production of this. Okay. I went for like three, four months. I was going between Montpellier and London. It was really nice, actually. And currently, by the way, I'm living in Montpellier, which is in the south of France. I'm right next to the beach. Oh, nice. Fortiche, uh, Fortiche after I was on uh, working on season one, 
they wanted to create more animation. And I said that I think it could be a good idea to actually go in the south of France and develop a studio there with the animators. So I started to crew, we created a studio in Montpellier where I have a team of 20 animators that are working on Arcane. Wow. Uh, but from the south of France. And they also opened another one in Las Palmas at the same time. So we have uh, three different branch of wow. Fortiche, the main one in Paris where they create all everything. And then us two different small uh, branch where we do only animation. And actually in Montpellier, uh, another department has started, which is uh, CFX. So we have, we're going to be around 40 people here. We have beautiful studio. We're in the south, so it's sunny. And uh, we have a foosball. We have a ping pong table. <laughs> and everybody in, that's what I love about Fortiche. It's um, it feels like a, they always wanted to make it feel like it's home. Like gotcha. you can stay there. We have a, actually I can show you. This is our little place where, oh, we, very nice. stay, where we have like the foosball. Oh, and, awesome. And like uh, sofas and stuff and all the animators are over there. Um, but, um, and even the offices are, it's really, really, really nice place. So anyway, to go back to, to Arcane, this is where I joined. It was like uh, two years and a half ago. And I worked in Paris for about six months and then COVID happened. And then from there, we actually developed the thing in Montpellier. It was, it was not for COVID that we went to Montpellier. It's just because of it was already in the process. But I, I, we started working on episodes from Montpellier around episode seven, eight. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. It was really at the end. And uh, in Paris, I was from episode two to episode, um, yeah, until the end. Gotcha. So now I was familiar with uh, Fortige. Um, Kevin Rucker, one of our uh, games instructor, um, he had come across, I think it was that, uh, pop stars, um, stuff that you guys had done. And there was, I forget the animator's name. We were going to, he goes, Hey, you got to get this guy in on a podcast. And we try to kind of work things oh, out. Maybe maybe it was Remy Tero. Yes. I think that's who it was. Oh, this guy is the guy who actually is, uh, the branch of in Las Palmas. Okay. Gotcha. So he is the, he's the lead, uh, the supervisor of Las Palmas in animation. And yeah, in KDA Popstar, so that was one of the clips that uh, Fortis developed. So what they did is they did the pilot for Arcane. So the first episode that you guys seen, and uh, it was a bit redone. There was some stuff changed. But anyway, this episode was the first one that was created. But that was like five years ago. And then uh, in the meantime, while they were trying to find some funds, develop more of the story, everything going uh they had a bit of a gap between that and the season two. Season two is, uh, sorry, episode two. Episode two is when I started, and that was around, I think, two to three years later. Really? Okay. Yes. And in between, so they did KDA, Popstar One, and they did also one called Rise. So they developed as well on some clips with the team there, and they also did a lot of the pre-production of the whole series. Okay. But so there, now, the yes, go ahead. So there was a good gap between episode one and episode two. Oh yeah, because episode one was just um, it was a pilot. You know, it was to 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 know if it was going to be made or not. Gotcha. <laughs> so yes. okay. In France, you, sometimes you don't have a lot of funds. Uh, actually, for Arcane, I think most of it has been financed by Riot. Uh, mm. Netflix just uh, did the distribution. Gotcha. At the end, uh, but um, yeah. So, okay. So Riot was obviously funding the pilot, correct? Yes. So what was the, um, and, and maybe, I don't know if you know, then the hesitation then to, to know that we're going to continue I in this. No idea. Okay. Um, it's really, gotcha. I don't, I don't know why, um, but I think it, I, I don't know. Well, one of the things I think is so amazing here is um, I, I've watched um, the first six because the last three just came out this Saturday. I have not had a chance yes. to catch up on those ones, um, but already, I know season two, season two, not episode, obviously, but season two has already got greenlit. And yes. I go, that's what a, what a neat testimony to having, you know, a pilot that's been in production three years later, now starting it. And already before the other ones just barely get out, they're already green lighting, you know, season yeah, two season on this. Two. So yeah, that's we've, I mentioned. We've, been, we've been working on season two for, for, for a bit now. So, okay. So that was going to be one of my questions. When did you know it was going to be greenlit? Uh, we are, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say okay. that we are, we were already working on it. So there has not been a lot of time in between. And for the time that was in between, it was just mainly pre-production for the people gotcha. that were staying there. In France, most of animators, they also have a certain status where you can, 
uh, it's a complicated status, but you are, you are somebody that can take some time off and getting paid by the government while you take some time off because you're, uh, you're considered an artist, but an artist like, uh, same as the people that are on stage, you know, and that are performing on in theaters. So those people, sometimes they have six months breaks because they don't have a show that they are on part of. So we're part of the same thing. So for that, when there is uh, times where there is a uh, gaps, uh, most of the people, they take some time off. So there's been people after season one that took four months, five months off, and then now they're coming back for season two uh, just to, to go start. But it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So now let me ask you this just out of curiosity. And again, I know you can't get into too much details, but what is, um, when you look at this season one here, um, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, where do you even begin on this here? As you kind of mentioned as well, as what I was thinking, I'm like the, the lighting, the look dev, the animation, the music, I mean, you name it in production, you guys hit it out of the park in every aspect here. So, and we'll, I'd love to get some, into some more details here, but what do you do now for season two where you want to push yourself, but still kind of keep that same um, continuity? Is there anything uh, that you guys are doing kind of different or are no. you going, Hey, look, this is, this is the look, this is where we're keeping. And yeah, we're keeping it. We're just making everything that we're to me. If you look at episode one or episode nine, there is uh, just in terms of animation, not in other departments, but it's the same for every department. It's just the quality has been like raised very high compared to the beginning because we learned a lot. Okay. And so for season two, we're going to have a very, something that is always looking good, always very, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but in French, we call it homogène, which means kind of, um, yeah. Standard. Like, content. And yeah, it's like always very, very high quality. Okay. So there is that. Yeah, it's getting better at what we do. And definitely the story, because it's the center of Arcane, is what right. happens to those characters. Why are they doing what they're doing? And the... Uh, I think this is, and also all the cinematography. I mean, what is amazing about season one is that is is, is mainly character, story, composition, cinematography, and then acting that supports that, and uh, everything supports each other. Like, right. like any good shows, anyway, it's always like this. But to go back to this, though, the thing at Fortis, this is the owners again. So uh, the owners are Jérôme Combe, Pascal Charu, and Arnaud Delors. So there are three French guys. And those guys, they're all artists. Mm. They are artists. They're not anything but artists. And they always wanted to push for something different than the, the watered down things that comes after. Um, how can I, I say? Is the, is, a, is, is the pass of production or is a pass of trying to please the more audience and stuff, which is actually... Uh, usually thought by people that are not artists. Right, right. And that's the case in all the studios, uh, especially at DreamWorks. It was a big problem for us on a lot of movies. I think if they trusted artists more into the design, the appeal, it would have changed a lot of things. And that's for everywhere. So um, I just had this very same conversation with my brother here on uh, that uh, Enchanto, the Disney one that's coming out. Yes. <laughs> same kind of thing. You know, yeah. visually everything is going to be top notch, but again, you again, to a certain degree, and this is no, no uh, slam on the artist there and things of that nature, but you go, it looks like Moana. It looks like, and so you, you kind of get into this bit of a cookie cutter um, scenario because you go, I know this works, right? The audience yeah. is already uh, um, set up to receive this here. Um, but it get, to your point there though, it does start limiting that uh push yes for sure after for disney i think those guys are the masters uh, at this i mean uh and kanto on my end i'm not a as fan as other stuff but in terms of appeal and how they can push the disney appeal to something that looks really nice to me they've been doing stuff in the past like uh, zootopia or big mm -hmm. hero or mm -hmm. um even like tangled it's like it's so appealing you actually really enjoy watching it. And now yeah. Fortiche brings an appeal that is different, but it's in their, their way. And yeah. I'm sure maybe in 20 years, people will look at those and yeah, we know it. And maybe it's not as, you know, in the same way, but I think for Disney, it's, it's for sure. They're very good in that way. 
Uh, I think it's more the other studios that are always trying to find their their appeal or their, their way. Niche, of, yeah. And for DreamWorks, it was between a boss baby or a dragon. It's very hard to find your niche for Sony as well. If you think of Smurfs versus uh, Spider Verse, right, right. Like so, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Problem. Well, no, that's but anyway. Neat. And that's all mostly coming from people being non-artists and wanting to develop right. uh, things that makes money. Yeah. Which again, you have to, uh, I think I have the book over here somewhere. Um, it was uh, Ed Catmull's, um, what's it called? But it was that idea of you got to, you got to feed the monster too. You know, you've got this where you've yeah, got to. Sure. And so I get that. That's, that's a very real aspect of reality here, Whoops. but there has to be that balance though, where you go, there's a reason why we're doing this. No. And it seems like that's the case there at uh, Fortiche. But for Fortiche, yeah, it was never been any time about money. It's always been about uh, how can we make this cool? How can we make this uh, adult? And and it's always about uh, finding ideas, but artistic, uh, you know, ideas for everything. It supports that artistic. It's like sequences in movies that you really like because of the, the ambience or because of the cuts that they do or because... So it's influenced from a lot of things, but then they put it into their own way. And to me, it's amazing. It's yeah, like, absolutely. Now, and, just out of curiosity, where was the stories developed? Was that developed there at Fort, uh, Fortiche as so well? Story, the, the writing is done at Fortiche by Christian Linke. Uh, oh, sorry, no, it's, it's done at Riot. Sorry, my bad. By Christian Linke and uh, Alexi. So those two guys are, are at Riot. Christian Linke is the director of the okay. TV series. So he's the guy that came up with the ID, that oversees everything. Gotcha, he is gotcha. at Riot. Okay, so this guy he developed uh, an amazing story, amazing characters yeah. from the game. And he got helped from those three guys uh, in Paris from Fortiche about developing that and changing some of the, the, the traits and some of the, the way that they were looking because for teach, then they bring all the artistic part to it. Because if you think of riot and the way that they think of their characters, if you look at Vi before our Vi, before for teach, Vi, I'm not going to say ours, but just to me, they did that even before I was there, you know, it's, I think it's those guys that really developed that. And, and it's a style that is, I think very, very different than what you expect, you know, if you think about games, et cetera. So right, that's right, what they loved sure. about Fortiche. And um, it's, I think it's Christian. So the guy who developed um, Arcane, who saw La Gaviota, which is a clip that Fortiche did, and he really liked it. And he decided to do Get Jinxed. It's a small uh, clip uh, about Jinx. Mm -hmm. And from there, the whole story between Fortiche and Riot uh, became what it is with the pilot and then the, the KDA and I mean, Rise KDA and then all the Arcane. And Christian is an amazing director. It's so awesome to work with him. Um, we see him, we show him the sequence in full blocking. We show him the sequence in full spline with all the animators together. And he's always amazing comments or amazing suggestion and intention and things like that, but it's running so smoothly. I've never had a show that runs so smoothly. It's insane. <laughs> I'm not kidding. In production, it's, it's amazing. In the way that their pipeline is set up, it's amazing. In the way that the rigs and the way that we animate, it's fucking awesome. It's, I, it's like this. And every department, I think, has that um, kind of feeling. Now, uh, what's yeah. cool about that and, and uh, having helped in the studio here, uh, you go, you know where that saves money then. You're, yeah, not, for waste, sure. you're not wasting money. And so that would seem like but, that would afford you to do this high quality level that because you, you're still within this budget here. And when yes. you're not, uh, when, think, when it's more efficient, it allows you to do this. I think stuff the budget you, is very low at Fortish for the quality that you see for sure. Okay. I mean, for sure. And they're doing it very differently. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say, um, I cannot tell a lot about how mm. we do things, but there is no lighting. There is not somebody that is the lighter at Fortiche that plays lights like this. It, okay. There is, uh, <laughs> compositions and things like that that happens, but, and same for the background. There is no assets. Like, I mean, there is assets, but there right. is not those gigantic assets that tons of people have to work on there. Right. There are a lot of animators and there are a lot of uh, people that paint. Painting. And okay, so that's what I noticed too. Is that a lot of the backgrounds I figured because of the level of detail 
in general, um, I figured it was a lot of background painting. But one of the things that was so cool was because of the style that you guys went with on that, it was seamless. Yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, it's because there is things that are modeled, but it's kind of projected on. So it's a painting, but it still has some, some kind of uh, yeah. elements that feels like it's... So but it's, uh, it's, it's a, like it, a painted background, and then you have these CG characters up front. It fit because of the, the overall look of Arcane, and the characters looking a bit painterly, it just yeah, it made it seamless across. Yeah, yeah. For for same for the characters, all textures yeah. are completely painted by yeah. people that just paint. So that's why I'm saying there's a lot of people painting and a lot of animators because there's when we do nine episodes of forty minutes. I mean, thirty five minutes. It's a lot of work. It's like the three features that we. That's did in, exactly what I was going to get at. Yeah, in two years. So in two years, we did two features and. Um, and, uh, and three features, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it's actually um so see, so yeah. usually that's what DreamWorks wanted to do when we were doing those uh, those movies and and we were around a hundred animators at Fort Tish, we were around uh, uh, 80 animators. Yeah, if you're looking at four episodes, it's at, or, or or nine episodes at 40 minutes divided by 90, you're looking at four. You're looking at yeah. four features. Well, it depends. If it's if it's Pixar features, then it's uh, it's three. Okay. And if it's DreamWorks, if it's one minute twenty, yeah, maybe around there for sure. Yeah, yeah. But so I think they're, they're not to, they're not forty minutes. They're like thirty five minutes, okay. thirty something. Oh yeah, yeah. With your buffer and stuff like that. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, you're looking at three but features. It, then it's still like uh, yeah, a lot of work was done. But for us, the the main the main reason why this was possible is because the rigs were real time. That means that when I play in Maya, it plays real time. Gotcha. But again, it's painted. The models are really gorgeous. The mm -hmm. team, uh, the modeling team is the head is Pascal Charu, and Pascal Charu is is not the head of the model. He's the, the head of the whole asset uh, look. But he, this guy, he he supervises all this, and is they're amazing. They're just stunning. <laughs> As you can see, what you see on screen is also because of that. It's. Uh, and so, but those models are done in a very efficient way. Then the rigging has always been done so that we can play real time. So, so like that for us to animate, it's a lot easier. And we're shooting tons and tons of reference uh, uh, for intentions, for acting is always about trying to push that um, sensation of somebody acting something that is real and not mm -hmm. just uh, uh, trying to do accents and poses and things like that, but right. actually having some real thought process all the time and some real intentions. So this was a blast to do. To me, it's always been the, the thing that I like in animation, but I try to teach my students right, right. Thought about those intentions and how to get those. But yeah. And, and just kind of a quick segue. I thought that was amazing. You know, we, we had posted here, um, Paloma, Natasha, Francesca, Mila, Emily, Clarice, Remy, Raphael, Andres, yeah. and I'm not going to even pronounce her last names because I'll, I know I'll have it. <laughs> but just kind of a quick shout out. And these were some, <clears throat> some iAnimate students and alumni here um, that you've been able to pull on on this. And so just as you know, as you're mentioning here, you know, the things I teach my students, you go, here we have proof of that here, working on an amazing, amazing yeah. show. For example, for uh, those students, some of those are with me in Montpellier. So those I actually... Um, had them in my classes. I really enjoy what they were doing and I hired them to work so with me. Awesome. So that, that I was really happy about just for animate for me, for uh -huh. the fact that I get to teach them, they're getting better. Then they come back to me with the thing that I teach them so that they can actually be efficient in a show. And some of them are doing amazing stuff. So it's, right. well, actually uh, all of them are doing amazing stuff. <laughs> So, and me, I'm super happy. And, so, and some others, uh, like Emily, Clarice, Natasha, all those guys were hired without any of my help, you know, just on their own. As, right. uh, and Emily and Clarice, it's funny because we really worked on their real. They were my students. We really worked on their real, on those mechanics and stuff. And Bart hired them uh, before I was even at Fortiche to work on season uh, one. And when I got there, they were, uh, Bart told me, I, I really like those body mechanics. They were feeling something more, like what we're looking for at, uh, at Fortiche. And nice. It's really, really cool. To hear that. <laughs> that's so cool. And that's one of the, uh, you teach um, workshop two, three, and, and four. four yeah. 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 So in, in two and three are dealing a lot with um, body, body mechanics. mechanics. Yeah. A lot with body mechanics. Well, any, everything is dealing with body mechanics. Yeah. Even in an acting, whenever you have to do the small things is going to require some type of that. It's just, um, 
yeah, in, in workshop two and three, we go a lot on the, on the yeah, just mechanics, walk, runs, uh, weight shift, and, and, and then a, a bit more pantomime acting, but with just, uh, with just the, how do you say the situation and stuff, but it's, um, yeah, I'm enjoying that a lot. What I'm enjoying is also seeing student progress, you know, and all those classes. And then the more they take uh, my class, the, the more we can keep working on a similar workflow so that they pr progress a lot. But I have a lot of students that take the, yeah, three, four, two, three, four, and then to get to the acting. And it's it's good to to see the progress. And all yeah, this. that's great. Yeah, I remember at the time when I was taking um, workshops, when I got into the acting ones, that's actually when you realize how solid your mechanics are because you go, I can have the best idea for acting on a shot, but if I can't get those body mechanics working, you can't sell it. So yeah. those are so foundational for, like you said, from straight body mechanics to all the way up to the acting and stuff. So. Yeah. That's, they're crucial. And if not, you're, um, yeah, you can, and to me, if you don't even have it to me, it's not only mechanics, but it's also workflow is the way that you approach a shot, the control you use to make your character move. Mm -hmm. Because then it's, if it's a mess, then it's impossible to polish. It's impossible to actually get what you want out of your rig, out of your, out of your animations. Mm -hmm. This is what we work a lot. And then after uh, what's really hard in acting is to, to show the intentions that you're having in your reference, but trying to make it on the character. And this is where we work a lot with the students on those poses to make them, go towards something that feels exactly like the ref, but that they were not seeing or that they were not being able to see. And that's a, that's a big work that we do in workshop four. But yeah, if you don't have your mechanics plus that to do, then it becomes very, very, very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real quick, because I also had a podcast with uh, Ronnie Namani. Uh, yes. Okay. How do you pronounce Ronnie Namani. Name? Yeah. Okay. Nam okay Namani. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, and we haven't released that. We're going to release it here probably by the time, you know, either this one yeah. or after yours. Um, but he, no, so this is the part I want to kind of, it's been a while since we've had you on a podcast. At that time, it was Rise of the Guardians where you you used a very um, particular workflow um, where you followed your reference pretty doggone close and you were even um, going off of two, or blocking out on twos and three or twos and fours and things like that nature, right? Yes. Is that still your approach? For, yes, a bit. It depends. I'm going to be honest with you. It depends. Okay. I think we all do reference. Um, and depending on the style of your show, you're going to need to use it a different way. Okay. In terms of the workflow, I would say no. The way to work is if you're blocking your shot, you want to put your intentions, so your main key poses first. You don't want to go and start copying your reference and the movement. You want to go, this is my main intention one pose this is my main intention here two pose three pose and then from there if you're in a cartoony show you're going to go a little bit further than what your pose is showing you and gotcha. if you go on a realistic show you're going to go closer to what you actually see in your ref and then in your in-betweens is the same thing i would say if you are in a very cartoony show your ref is going to be here for your main uh, key poses intention and then everything is going to be more about animation principle like anticipation breakdown okay. yeah, yeah. settle and and getting into the pose and playing into the poses where you don't need that ref so you take it off it's something that i sh that I actually teach a lot but um the fact that you want to get out of your ref much sooner if you want to be on a cartoon issue okay. now on arcane the style is so graphic and the show is so real that we get away with staying something pretty realistic, gotcha. but we work on poses like insanely long before we get into even close to getting um, uh, the reference and, the, and, and copying movements and stuff like that. You know, uh, I think we're in a medium where we had, so the way for Tish work is they have beautiful boards, like uh, very beautiful boards. The layout does exactly the same as the boards. And so our shot, most of the time we go with a very similar pose to the boards. And so we act in this and that pose, we refine it very, very much like every time. So that takes a lot of our time is making sure the poses are really beautiful. And then in the mechanics is making sure things are heavy, things are real, things feel very natural. And that's been so hard, so hard. I think is for some reason, it feels really hard, like uh, in, in that sense, but um, to go back to it, so no, my workflow is I put my main intention poses and then I put more in-betweens wherever I need for eyes or things that changes. And then after at the end, 
when I finish my blockings, most of the time, yes, I'm around on twos or threes, depending. But I go more like a, like a regular uh, workflow, I would say. What I used to do was going straight ahead. So I was going from the beginning and just putting my keys as I was copying with my reference. I think you, you lack a lot of uh, posing aspect uh, in the animation process. But if you want to be realistic, you stay close to your ref. So no matter what, you, you still do the same principle, but it's still going to feel like it works together. And if you're very cartoony, then you, you just improvise what you want. And gotcha. Mainly for your keyboards. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now, I was kind of curious, you know, how much of it's changed since then. As I was mentioning, uh, I had a podcast um, with Tal Schwartzman. And since he's been at Pixar now from DreamWorks, and his approach has changed. Um, you know, and so I was just kind of curious how much of yours has evolved and stuff like that as well. What is Tal doing? He's doing more of a spline um, blocking. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of it's still very, it, it's less, um, less the, the rise of the guardians way where it was kind of a lot that way and trying to similar, I guess, in that sense where it's a lot of you're getting in those golden poses, but he's, he's blocking and spline. So he can kind of feel that emotion. He said, you kind of step can kind of feel like it's, um, cheating the eye. And so it can kind of, um, if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. It yeah, but almost I see, fool like, you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. It's always, um, <clears throat> Well, to me, you can you especially in a cartoony show. If you're uh, if you're working in spline, you get a lot of smooth things, but it's hard to to have a feeling of things. Where in step, for sure, you can get a feeling of of quicker. Um, um, and it's yeah, depends, depends. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah, yeah, just interesting, just interesting. Very so, interesting. how prepared were um, the students from I, I animate coming over there for you? Depends. Okay, I think. I mean, this is a big I, show that the the standard was high. I mean, Overall, it's super difficult show. Okay. okay, so it's a very hard show. So I demand a lot of uh, of them constantly in terms of their reference, in terms of their blocking, in terms of their posing, in terms of their polishing, in terms of the connection. I ask a lot to so so I'm really picky, and so that's why I'm saying depends. But uh, overall, I would say um, they learned a lot. They gotcha. Learned a lot, like. Uh, we're doing shots after shots after shots after shots. So we're, we're averaging about 0.7 seconds a day. So we're yeah. doing about 3.5 3 seconds a week. So okay, I think so Works is doing around four. We're yeah. doing around four, similar to, to that. Wow. So On a much is smaller very, budget, though. Yes, for sure. <laughs> because we don't have all the other departments that have the similar amount as the animators. More. It's not exactly that, but if you think of DreamWorks, they have, I think, 20, 25 riggers. For Tish, they have four riggers, I think, when it was the mix max. So how were you able to keep that level of quality? Well, because it's done in a smart way. Okay. The same for the background. You know, if you think about creating every background and do all the assets, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh -huh. If you actually rely more on people painting them and actually reusing some of those in a smart way, then it becomes um, much more efficient. But it, it requires more thoughts in, in the way that we lock the storyboards very early okay. so that um, everything is the same in the, in the, in the layout. And it's also a lot of reuse, use similar shots, but different sequence with different lightings and stuff. And then it's, it's, everything is being, is being really smart and same for rigging characters have pretty similar in some way. And you can, you can have animation that goes on to one or the other. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Ending. And so there's a lot of those things. Beautiful. There. That's amazing. Because I was even looking at too uh, on this as well. I mean, you guys have in some shots some major crowd. Uh, yeah, shots. it's true. Yeah, and there's like, been there's a crowd department. There are two people. Okay. <laughs> or t three people, I think. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So in short, that's what I really loved about this. I figured the budget couldn't be the Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar type level, but one of the things that this did not feel like particularly as an episodic it did not feel like it was the bar and everything else set lower it looked like that was a theatrical release yeah for and, sure and, and you know there i think from an animation standpoint you could probably tell a couple dips here but again in, in its, its entirety no one else would have noted that but maybe but an artist and even those are very small 
Yeah, and even to me, it's because I'm very close to it and I see the difference, but most people will be like, I think to me, it's in terms of, I mean, the response that I've been getting from people is constant. I've been working at DreamWorks for a long time. I've never had this kind of response first, but it's right now, it's like every day I get somebody else that I knew previously is <laughs> like, man, I've seen Arcane, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, I know we're so excited. And then I'm like, it becomes almost a little bit, oh, somebody else. <laughs> but it's not that we're, I think to me, it's, it's amazing. And the, again, when I saw those five sequences uh, three years ago, when Bart showed me those, I was like, wow, this yeah. is going to be amazing. Really, I was in Montpellier. I was in London, had a very good life. I decided to let my apartment in Montpellier go and moved to Paris at my mom. So I'm 40 years old. I was living at my mom's <laughs> house when I was working on Arcane. You're like, this is worth Paris. it. Yes, it was worth it. <laughs> Especially now, even we I have the studio in Montpellier that because they trusted me to, to keep the quality of what they have built in Paris here too. And they're super happy with the work that we're creating here. That's so amazing. Like, Congratulations. That is, that is something else, man. I tell you. And one of the other things too, I was talking with my brother here, um, I think just even this morning is this wasn't just eye candy either, you know, because one of the things that eye candy can do is it can kind of get that nice high pop and then it just kind of fades. This this thing, you know, it's that old added story is king. And the story with this was just, and like I said, I'm not, I don't even finished it. My brother had finished the uh, other three and he was like, Larry, you, you got to <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So I'm going, it is just really, really amazing. This isn't, you know, and that's partly, partly the problem, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, video game ap- adaptations for movies, right? It's this uh, established IP, you got these characters, but there's no story behind that. This right. was almost the opposite in that sense. And then all of this beautiful camera work, effects, animation, you know, look dev, everything was just helped support that. And it was just really, really remarkable. Yeah, and so, you know, if you talk about effects, by the way, he's, most are done in 2D. Uh, I think there are four or five 2D artists that does the effects, but there's no big effects team with Houdini and all uh-huh. this. <laughs> Would you guys so do all this in Maya? Uh, what do you mean, the effects? Yeah. No, effects are done in like a, a, a digital painting uh, I figured some of that was, but I know even, I don't know if it's the first or second episode when the um, building explodes. Uh, yes, those are a lot of, a lot of those are in 2D, 2D, uh, 2D. Drawing. I figured the smoke and stuff was, but I didn't know if the building collapsing and stuff like no, that. No, yeah, there is 3D as well. Okay. But I think there was one guy or two, two people in uh, full uh, FX. And one of the things that was really cool, even just that we're talking about the effects, is the effects did not feel like it was in, okay, hang on a minute pun intended, an after effect, you know, it wasn't something that was just done afterwards. Like, okay, you know, we need something here because they're stepping, we need some, you know, uh, dust particles, you know, this, the effects felt like it was in, intentional for visualization. It, it was part, it was almost yeah, like a yeah, character always. in that sense. Yeah, but they were planning it ahead. Same thing before it even goes to animation. We knew there was going to be some effects done. They tell you in your shot, there's going to be this and then, but uh what they do though um is those guys we also put sometimes in our scene some annotation of where we would want this and this to happen and then mm. they, because they do it in you know in a in a 2d pass after that they can definitely work on that but those guys are amazing those 2d those 2d effects artists are doing an amazing amazing job it's like uh i have someone on instagram and their work is is like really amazing and that's and what to me, I, like i've it, always it, loved that the 2d feeling in effects yeah. is, and it's those are on twos. If you look uh, frame by frame, those are on twos. So it creates a feeling of being on twos versus the characters being in spline. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and that's what I guess I mean. It didn't feel like it was like okay, we you know we have to do effects. It was like okay, give this to this artist. They're amazing at this. You know, that's what it felt like. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, okay, very cool. Um, again, music too was an, it was a key factor in this too with the uh, Imagine Dragons uh, before the release of Arcane. I think they had shown the video. Um, yeah, so Enemy was done was directed by Bart, the, the the head of animation of the Fortiche, and he did Enemy uh, for the for like a, how to say a, 
uh, it's for arcane basically just mm-hmm. to, to before the show just to for uh for advertisement or like gotcha. before, like a, like a teaser kind of a thing okay yeah 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 and um and with JD in there and all this is, I love that clip, the way that they made them, made them move and the animation and the graphic style of it as well. Yeah. It was, it was like a pre arcane. Uh, but the reason for that to go back to the artist and the music is a Christian uh, Linke as well, which is uh, the director of the show uh, used to be a music artist for a riot. So he was doing a lot of the music for the games or for the cinematic so i don't even really know but so but he was doing that music and i think he 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 has a lot of inspiration a lot of uh of uh, groups that he likes that he wanted in there and he he pitched it and apparently they said yes and yes and yes and he's asking for more and more and more artists so we'll see in season two what we get <laughs> that's cool but I, i'm super happy the same thing with this with wood kid or imagine dragon or the 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 it's phenomenal actually the whole the whole um uh, music is um is really 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 yeah cool. again not something that felt like it was an afterthought it felt like it was very oh, yeah, it intentional was, we were we were story. animating with the, already the music it's something gotcha. that's that's rare apart from disney's when they have songs but here was you know since those were uh, a lot of clips in some sequences in Fortige, they do those kind of they call clipesque. So it's like um, they want to do kind of a feeling of different things going at the same time, and it's like feels like a clip, like a music video. And so they did it with the music already, and and all the the editing of this was done with those music exactly at the same time. Even though they actually changed a little bit when I hear the last uh, the last version. Okay. But overall overall is is already very very much um done with the with the with the music and uh, the feeling of the the sequences are in relationship with that and so. what were some of the um you know you kind of mentioned some of the benefits of animating with you know the rigs being real time um what were some of the lessons learned for you know you mentioned you had 14 plus years at dreamworks in one of the highest level studios in our industry what were some of the lessons learned that you had or your team had working on a show like this in animation in, in this realm and this budget, things of that nature. For me, it feels the same as what I've always been doing okay. here at DreamWorks in terms of the rigs. I think at DreamWorks um, when I left, they had real time rigs as well. You could have even six, seven characters, maybe not, but like four or five characters and have still real time with all of them in high res um so and i think that's something that all the studios should develop um i see in france for example a lot of studios still have rigs that goes uh 12 frame per seconds where you see only half of what you should see so then you have to play blast and when you play blast well you lose a lot of time and you can't even see it moving while you adjust things and right but to me having real time like this in the software is should be the future and is already should be the present actually so that that's for sure is one thing that is super important for a good quality animation is having that. If not, it becomes uh, yeah harder. I think with the new Maya 2020 and the blue uh, it, cash. Uh, buffer cash, yeah, I think it's okay, but still is not as just simple as just it plays and it's just working, working. When you change, it doesn't cash again. It's just it's just playing, you know. <clears throat> At Disney, I think they have a cash system too. Uh, which works, but I think it's not the most efficient. I'd rather have real time rigs. But. Gotcha. And yeah, for animation, to me on on uh, on Arcane, is trying to f- to use the the posing and not maybe you know like when characters are are like this and they talk, we're not gonna have them go like this to this to that in every shot. They stay in the pose. They talk in it. Feels very natural. So. I think that's something that I'm super happy we, we, we have been able to push is because sometimes in animation, you always want to have this thing of, uh, yeah, but it's animation. Yeah, but it's... And me on Garden is something that we try to push for. It was not maybe not made the best way back then, but it's something that here um, they made it the perfect way because of the graphic style, because of the, 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 the fact that it's an adult show, because it's a drama, because so all these things makes it so that it doesn't feel weird. And it feels really good to see actually characters that act like this and, and feel uh, real. But yeah. 
this may seem kind of funny, but there was one shot. Um, and I, I, I'm terrible, terrible with names, but it's the guy with the uh, eye. Oh, Silco. Oh, okay. And it's the shot where he get, comes back in. He's a little bit uh, frustrated, I think, because um, Jinx had messed something up. And it's it's before he looks up and uh, his uh, yeah. number two is up on the <laughs> ceiling, right? But the shot is, is he sits down, but then he kind of even adjusts and, and pushes back. And it was like, there was just something in that from an animation standpoint that I was going, he didn't just sit down and that was the shot. There was something that he sat down and kind of had to readjust and push himself back. And it really played itself to that. He was a, he was frustrated and he was, you know what I'm saying? And so it was just even little stuff like that, that you're talking about where you go, it pulled into the believability that felt like something that if this was live action, someone would have done. Yeah. What's funny is, the beginning there were a lot of people not using reference and towards the end i think most people are using a bit of reference i know some animators still aren't but for this kind of thing like this actually it's it's just when you're in the ref and you're like and you're you're getting readjusted and yeah just, you have this little thing that makes it feel really really nice so yeah and after making that into your shot and then pushing for the character of silco it's all about the appeal that you get in your pose uh, to make it feel exactly like it should. Uh, this is this is just amazing. The other stuff that was really hard is all the fight. Okay, the fight stuff has been like uh, is something that we spend a lot of time on. Um, but we spend a lot of time on the posing and those and to make it feel real. It's not like trying, you know, to have people that can jump a lot of big things and they can do. A lot of uh, magical thing. They always wanted to make the fight feel like a real fight that's raw, that hurts, and um, yeah, and those it's are kind of, very challenging, very challenging. Well, I'd love to hear um, why, but it's kind of funny because I was talking with uh, my brother again about this, and um, I've got an age range of kiddos, and uh, I was wanting them to see some of this here, and it was kind of, to be honest with you, it was actually some of the fight scenes that kind of made me second guess on some of the age groups that I have again, not because they were ultra b- bloody and gory. It was because of that, that grittiness yeah. in it, you know, where it was kind of like, okay, maybe I need to say second guess that for, for these kiddos or something, you know? Um, yeah. But it, it, because it felt like that grittiness of a fight, you know? Yeah. They always wanted to push for that. So sometimes we have to push for coolness for league of legends, for, you know, so um, well, you haven't seen it, but you'll see in the last three episodes a moment where um, uh, Jace and Vi, they fight and there is, uh, it becomes a bit more than just something that feels real. You know, there is things that go super fast and they have those big, uh, big X-Tech uh, gear on so they can do a lot of things. So there is a bit of that, but there is also that beginning where they're on in the alley, those kids. and Yeah. Yeah, she hits her with the wood board and uh, and uh, and all this stuff, and yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, so what was it that was so challenging with the um, fight scenes? Was it just oh, I just just that to mid- make it feel very real and very okay. um, so it doesn't feel smooth or it doesn't feel slow or it doesn't feel uh, stroby or things like that. It's just to make it feel uh, good. It's always very hard. I think it's in any show. It's very hard. But on this one, uh, I feel like it's a lot, a lot harder. But I don't know. I don't know why exactly. It's maybe because we first. I'm going to say this is because the director of animation, so uh, Bart, the, is uh, demands a lot about mechanics. He is like, and he has uh, an eye for that and a feeling for that. That's very, that's amazing. So that's that's one and. It's just because to make things feel heavy, even if you think in VFX how much time they take, it takes a lot of time. And and, oh, that's another thing. We have no or almost no CFX in most of the things that we do. So most of the things are rigid or pretty much. So so it means that we need to animate a lot of those things so that they don't feel like they lock and they're like, you know, so, so all this stuff has to feel organic and, 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 and very, uh, again, like heavy. Yeah. And, gotcha. so that, and even walks, they need to look cool. And, and those are, since the, our characters are very realistic in proportions, it needs to feel very normal when they do things. And 
for that, it's, it's a very, very big challenge because it's not only mocap, you know, or something like that, you know, it's all keyframe. So we need for the mechanics to feel like real mechanics and yeah, so it's, it's reference and it's uh, understanding of it and it's, yeah. So, so that's why it's hard. It would seem like also some of the um, camera work too would have added an extra level to those shots because it's not like some just static camera too. Yeah. But they 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 work the camera and very again it's the storyboards guy. Uh, there is two storyboard artists, um, Roma and Simon. I don't remember the last name, uh, but those two guys were uh, one was the head and the other one was the supervisor. And they created some sequences with those cameras already made, with those angles uh, that you see, with the the depths, the even in the fights, the choreography, and all this stuff. And it it shows, you know, to me. Oh yeah. But again, it's because those guys are beautiful artists that are doing an amazing job, and <laughs> they let them do what they are good at. Yeah, yeah. But that would have seemed like that would add an extra level of difficulty with the fight scenes when you're trying to establish. Um, yeah like you said, some of the, the impact or the, the weightiness to it. Now you've got a camera that's moving too, you know, um, but the camera, yeah, they move, but in a very simple way. You know? Okay. It's more like a movie. It's always used more like a movie set where you have camera that goes maybe a little bit in or this, but they stay always pretty much in the same angle, maybe a bit wider, but for most of the shot, they stay, you know, same as, same as okay. uh, with a bit of movement in them, but it's, um, it's well, well, and you, you, the, the truth is the composition of the shot and the way that, um, again, those guys in the board are thinking about it is making it feel this way. You know? gotcha. The layouts, they, they really stick to the board. So they're really good at that and making those cameras feel the same and not making them move like what we do usually. And so it's, it's um, I think it's more restricted in, than anything else. But okay, gotcha. Um, one of the things I felt that was kind of interesting, and maybe you can kind of correct me on this, um, the dynamics in the story with the um, different class levels, right? And the American Revolution was a different revolution than the French Revolution, whereas the French Revolution seemed to be more about the class struggle in that regards. Correct? Yeah, yes, yes. Did, did that hit a bit? And, and again, one of the things I thought that they did really, really well with the story, though, is it wasn't just... Um, and I was watching something here kind of behind the scenes and they mentioned um, there was merit and flaws on both sides. So it wasn't just this yes, good exactly guy, bad that. guy and stuff like that. So there's, just, there's the guys from the top that are um, having a better life than the guys from the bottom in Zon. So in Zon, there's all the people that are trying to survive and it's very hard for them. And yeah, they don't have a lot of money or anything. And up there they do. But that doesn't mean that up there um they don't want to change that or they're all like oh we shouldn't it depends of who who it and it's the same from down there from yeah. down there some of them they think that up there they're all this and some they think that actually it could be okay this is why the whole caitlin vi uh relationship uh, is starting and both of them didn't think that could happen but they're both understanding both sides of the story and right. why are they getting into into this and and I mean, to me, the writing on there has been amazing. The the way that Christian thought about those characters, the interaction, Christian and Alex, um, those those two directors, uh, the way they thought about the characters and the interaction with them, and and uh, the those two sisters and what it becomes and why, and this these other characters that are playing for their fathers and what roles do they play in this story is just um, it, it just brought a whole it, level of dynamic to it. Then on the yes. surface and and if you look at all the other side stories which are not there are their own stories like the the jay's victor uh so those are the two uh inventors and their dynamic where it goes or uh, jason mel is the um, is those two counsel that uh, are in the uh, uh, gets into a couple together and their dynamic and the, the moms of um of Mel that I don't think you have seen that yet, but uh, you will see in the three episodes that arrives and her role and all this stuff that, you know, becomes all those stories that creates also what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then one of the other things too is like, and I, I, 
forgive me, Riot. Um, I have not played League of Legends. Uh, <laughs> believe me, there's plenty of people who have. Um, yes, but sure. I'm familiar <laughs> enough with it, having seen cinematics and things of that nature, right? And one of the things I thought was so stinking cool about the storytelling on this was I didn't have to know the League of Legends game for sure. to not only follow it, but then I said, then I started seeing like you know, uh, that Jason, I, I thought I saw him, the familiarity with him being in the game, but yet it wasn't like this prop to kind of um, feed the fan base. You know, it was like, it worked it in so naturally and so well um, that it just, it made it, a, it felt like a natural part of the story. But you'll see the prop will come later with Jason. It's in episode seven or eight or okay. nine. It's uh, yeah, an eight, I think, but you'll see. He has a hammer. He's like, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. But it didn't feel like a prop of a character. Like, hey, we got Oh, yeah, okay, okay. He's so in, you yeah, he's in the game, right? So we got to put him in. Right. It felt like a the, natural progression of this whole story. Yeah, for sure. I think the way that they, they thought about those characters and the way that they wanted to play the champions, as they say in League of Legends, uh, I think they actually made it very, very nicely. To me, me, I've never played the game. Uh, I mean, I've played a game, but I was like, I played maybe 10 hours, so I didn't play the game. I didn't know those guys, like who they were. But when I started on the show and then I started to understand, so I looked a little bit and I think the way that they actually made it um, uh, with some characters that they added, some that they put that are already from the, it's really cool. And yeah. they, they did it the right way for sure, because yeah. you don't have to. To, to know anything of League of Legends, to be able to watch that show and understand everything and loving it. Right. Just sometimes you have characters that appears and maybe because of the way that they are coming. And actually, they've, they never play that. You know, it's something like you can think in, in, any, in any TV series, you have a character that you're expecting to come out and he comes out and then you're like, oh, is that character? But when they play those moments, it's actually characters that are not in the game. Like when uh, Mel's mom comes out and she goes, uh, we, we see her we don't know her but she appears like from the from you know from the far when silco appears from the far the same thing is not somebody that uh, is in the game so it's it's a i mean i i think they they never played it like oh is that character or... yeah 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 for sure now was this always meant to be um uh, episodic in this nature yes i think so yeah okay and that's one of the things that i really um and it's kind of funny we've been releasing um some of our past podcasts to YouTube. And if we've got the video, we've been doing that. And so it's been neat to kind of go back to some of my podcasts that I've done with other artists um, years and years back talking about, you know, Netflix now and to be able to do stuff like this. And it's just neat to see that be worked out in this kind of format. Um, the episodic on this it really just allows you to dive deeply yeah, into these characters. For sure. For sure. I think that's always been what Christian wanted to do. It was an episodic, but I'm not sure. But I think so. It's To me, it makes sense for totally to sense. characters. <laughs> anyway, and you, nowadays, a lot of people, I mean, we all love TV series for that, for how much you develop characters in there right. and how you, you attach to, you get attached to them and how you like their arcs. And Because in the movie, you can do a lot, but... You're still limited with, much. yeah, an yeah, hour and a half to two, time, I talk, yeah, you know, sure. sometimes particularly for so, animated. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. That's, that's um, yeah. That to me was, and, and for Netflix, uh, I'm super happy that, um, you know, a distributor like that can actually uh, show it yeah. to, the, to the world, you know, and, and, and that people gets to see it uh, from their living room and that my mom or whoever is in the U S or can actually see it. Yeah. So that to me is also something that's really, uh, really awesome. Yeah, and I think it allows it to to develop IPs like this that are particular that are just so unique. You know, yeah, I think for the second season, it's also because of Netflix uh, really enjoyed the first season when they uh, when they saw it and they wanted to keep going with some uh, this IP that they, that they think is worth it. But I yeah. think it's totally worth it. <laughs> so, how much did this studio have to grow after um, the show was greenlit? Well, um, so those guys, they were, I think the studio was about 15 employees about seven years ago. And now we're about, I think, 300. Like this. <laughs> so they've grown a lot. But oh, yeah, uh, as you can see, they even have two branches now, one in Montpellier, yeah. one in Las Palmas, where we are. So no, they've grown a lot. But to, but they the, to check the quality, 
they also don't do it just like to grow. They just do it very, very carefully. And, and I think it's, uh, it's working very, very well. Okay. Cause that was going to be my, kind of my next question is oftentimes, you know, when you, you have that kind of growth and again, to your point, I can see why they aren't just growing to this for the sake of growing. They're growing because of the, the, um, popularity that they've been able to, you guys have been able to yeah. do. But, but if I'm hard. honest, it's, they're not going to accept anything for now. You know, it's not like uh, right now we, they have so much to do with Arcane and all the talents are in Arcane. So what happened in studios is most of those talents, then um, they don't have enough. So they want to hire more so that they can develop multiple shows. The problem right. is those new talents, they're not the ones that originated all this you know, those graphicness and this and this. So then after it becomes with other shows that are not maybe the same of the, of the brand and of, of the, so they will never do that. Those, those three guys, I think they always want to have a look and to be able to, to produce the thing that comes out of their company. So uh, for now, it's going to be with Riot for a lo- little bit uh, longer, for sure. But, uh, but then for other projects, I don't think they will uh, take anything until they have the time to really dedicate for it and to really push for the same quality on everything that they de- deliver. Gotcha. No, that's fantastic. Because, yeah, that was my next thought as I'm going. That It's always tough to go from this size to this size and still try to keep that same DNA. But- in, in France, uh, it goes like this, and it, maybe they will get a smaller and then re- get bigger again uh, in a few years after that, but I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From now on, I think they will always have at least a project that's going to be able to handle. To afford the, the artists that are there. Um, now, w- one of the things I love about our industry is there are talented artists all over the place. Um, and we have students from all over the place, but there's been typically pockets of um, studios in, to, to find the work. And so it's neat to see somewhere like France that has your company yeah. there. Has it been easy or was it easy or difficult to find artists to, to, to fill those no. vacancies? Okay. No, no, no. I mean, in France, we have a uh, very good animators uh, or um, any of any, any artists in the animation industry, I would say not only animators, but all the departments, we have very good schools, um, so no, it was not a hard at all. That's was, good. Uh, and 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 we got people coming from. Uh, for us in France, we hire everybody in, uh, that we want in Europe. You know, we don't need any visa for anybody. So uh, we hired Spanish people, Italian, uh, uh, Dutch. Uh, what do I have? I have a Canadian. I have a but Canadian. They have for young young visas, so it was easy. I got Steve Mayer with me, actually, um, who is, um, uh, he used to be an animator at uh, Disney, an animator at DreamWorks for a long time. And then he went to London. And when he was in London on Ron's Gone Wrong, I called him and I'm like, dude, I'm having this studio in Montpellier. And he came here with his whole family in the south of France and he loves it here. But I ha- we have a <laughs> lot of, uh, of, uh, of nationalities and it's really cool. But we That's have- awesome. Half half of the people are French, I think. Here in gotcha. and in Paris, I would say two thirds are are French. I think. Okay, but no talents are. You know, f- uh, French people are good in in animation, and that's why I, uh, Fortiche was done by those French guys. You know this right. This style is. So. I just that and I knew that. That's why I mentioned that it was all over. But it's typically, you know, you were from yeah, France and you were France. working in the U.S. Here, you know, yeah, that's so, true. It's so true. there's a lot of French. DreamWorks actually. <laughs> yeah, because there aren't those studios there. Yeah, but it's true. Fortiche now it, it affords a place for is is Fortiche and artists to be there. It, yeah. Illumination as well with McGuff. They have a few as well artists there. So those those two studios in France already bring a lot of um of artists. I th- but uh Fortiche has the um, has has been able to develop a show that represents their identity. You know, what's funny is it becomes a bit of riot and fortiche identity, which gotcha. it's, it's, <laughs> for me, it's still fortiche, but uh, it's also what riot is showing of their work now is even if they, if they, I don't know if you've seen Valorant, the, the 2d um, and that's just me saying that is not fortiche. It's just me. Like, I think I know which one it is. They just recently released uh, kind of some clip of a, yeah, it was from units. Yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. Unit or it looks amazing. Yeah. And so Riot uh, did it with those guys, but they had the same type of um, graphicness, you know, with yeah. those textures and uh, 
So yeah, so they're trying to to keep that style as being riots uh, style, but it's for Tishu brought that style. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and even some of the two uh, D effects, because I remember back on that uh, Pop Stars, um, there's some really really cool effects. I, th- I uh, don't know 2D. the characters again, um, but I think it's where she's in the uh, looks yeah, like the a subway type deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or in there where there's those. Yeah, stuff's going and it's the, the camera work and some of the effects are just really phenomenal. But that was Fortiche as well earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Fortiche. Yeah. That was Fortiche. I don't know if I have uh, the slide here. Maybe I don't know if it works. Last time I was looking at it because I have the reference for this shot of the guy that did this shot. And so, um, but I don't know if this will work. I want to check. It's like, sorry. Let me know and I'll share the, uh, I can share yeah, the screen. I'll try to just. This is the beautiful part about doing the podcast with video now. I've been doing it for quite some time now. Let's, uh, let me share actually. I don't know if I'm allowed, but if not, we'll cut it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're seeing the. the yep. Yep. The, yeah. Okay. So this is just to show you the storyboards that are done at Fortiche. Voilà. That's amazing. That's here. Yeah. Just, we're one to one. We're one to one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would think beginning. that's something that you would want to have in all the studios, you know. But that gives that that um, all of that homework or uh, exploration done a lot up front and established now. So now, as an artist and animator, you can kind of just run with run with yes. it. Use your skills of what you're there for. And, yeah, and for sure. And just do it exactly. Let me show you this. Actually, I, I have it in there. I think it will work. Yeah, it works. So this is the, um, yeah. the clip. Yeah. That's his work of Remy. Love that shot right there with the shoulders. I don't know why. Yeah, awesome. It's uh, just cool. Here you have the boards. Uh, you see, so everything is already set up in those boards as well in some way. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, we have our beautiful reference. Well, that was the reference that was used for those shots. <laughs> Now, okay, let me ask you this too, because we're talking about reference and he, Remy, I'm, I don't know if he's a trained dancer, but you know, you go, oh. he, he's having to do things that are beyond maybe his capabilities and stuff. Um, you know, we're, here in Arcane, you're having to do things, whether it be proportion or things like that, that are outside of your ability, unless you're just a, a trained actor in that regards. So what are some of the things that you're looking for um, for reference oh, or for your reference artist. Look from movies, movies, movies. Uh, we have a channel that is like reference and we're like, you guys know of somebody that is uh, getting hold by the feet and that is falling. And then they're like, Oh yeah, there is this movie. Remember? And then they show the, the trolls uh, who holds the Hobbit like this, or in uh, Skywalker when he's like uh, uh, hanging out from, so there is always like things like this where you can go and actually find a reference. For gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's we, we always use reference, but uh, it's from in, coming from lots of different resources. Somewhere, gotcha, gotcha. Now, how was the communication with you and um, Riot? Because I know they're here in California, correct? Yeah, so we do we do lively uh, we do live sessions like this weekly with them, where we show the work. Uh, it's very easy. It's like a, a half an hour where we show Christian our work in animation, and he comments on it, and we have a discussion. It's um, yeah, it's, but, but that's you guys it. Are nine it, hours difference, yeah. though, too. 
Yeah, yeah. They he he wakes up in the morning, and for us, is before we leave for, uh, for yeah. our day. Yeah, that's what's so, so funny. It's, it's, it's early morning, me. It's into your day here. Yeah, I had exactly. a quick text with you last and night. I'm, I'm getting ready to go to bed. You're just starting your day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> Yesterday, I was like, oh, yeah, this morning. Yeah, it was very early for me this morning. You're like this. I'm like, okay, okay. So, so. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's that nine hour difference, but it's okay. It's because we don't we don't see him a lot for Tish. Uh, um, in animation, we are... Uh, doing our thing and Christian really enjoy what we're doing because Bart uh, took a lot of time with him to kind of understand what he wanted, understand the style, understand all this. And I think we, we are getting it. And now it's become this very, very seamless relationship where it's all about intentions and getting the right acting for the moment so that the audience understand. And, but all the rest, he's not like, Oh, you should do a blink here. And it's, it's not that it's really about, broad big stuff all these things about blinks or animation is done at fortiche where we take care of that uh, you know that that's that's your area of expertise there yeah now you know you mentioned you know you weren't real super familiar with the games in the sense of playing them how did you guys get to really understand the characters what were some of the things that really helped you uh, just from the tv series and from christian christian he's telling you though she is like this this is the character and this moment, this is how she feels for that reason. Uh, let's try to keep a little bit of that. Or So it, it was very easy, um, I think, for us. And also because of Fortiche, uh, they knew as well how they wanted them to play, how they wanted them to be. Um, and yeah, I, I love that. Like when they play the Silco guy, they're not playing him like the villain, you know, like he's like, oh, I don't know. Like, yeah, play, yeah, yeah. No, it's just a guy that is like. Uh, yeah. And even um, angry Jinx. and yeah, even Jinx is to me. They always go for um, to the. It's like this little girl that has been hurt and that has all those emotions that she doesn't know what to do, but she's completely lost. It's not she's crazy. It's not that. It's just life has been so hard on her, and and I love that you know because yeah. there are some moments where she is still that young kid and she plays and she is fun and then all of a sudden she becomes this sad person that is empty and playing that was always super fun but it's yeah. i think what i love is like we played differently than 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 those characters that are crazy you know like crazy girls uh like uh arley queen for example is something i think we didn't play that we play something a bit more specific a bit more uh in depth with who is the character and right. in those uh, moments exactly you know yeah and it would have been real, I could see where it would have been real easy to play it as just the Harley Quinn, but this was yeah, not, sure. this was, there was depth to this that um, brought to each, empathy. To each character, to each exactly. character. A, yes. a lot of depth. But Christian always, I think, have very, very good intention when he launches us on those sequence. Uh, we know what we have to do. We understand why they are here, where they're going, what's their goal in this sequence and what he wants to say and how they want to act for this or that reason. And I gotcha. think it's been um, yeah, a pleasure. I got to imagine Riot's been over the hill with the, how this has been received. Yeah, they're super happy um, for Tish as well. We're, we're, we're thrilled with how it's been received. Uh, I knew it was going to be received like this. We all knew we, when we are working on this, on those, and we were looking at those episodes on boards and we're like, Oh, it's amazing. But what do you think could happen there? And then we were all talking about it. Like, um, you know, like wanting to see the end, uh, what's going to happen. So if the artists working on the show are that much excited, usually it's a good sign. And it shows in, in, in the previous uh, animated shows that worked well. Most of the time there has always been kind of an emulation of artists like, wanting to work towards something that was really cool. Me, yeah, it felt yeah. like that on Panda. It felt like that on Dragons. It felt like that on Guardians, even though it was not a big, big success. Uh, and it felt like that on Arcane like crazy since the first time I saw those five sequences. And, <laughs> and yeah, it's because those projects have something different, you know, and you know that they're going to be, they're going to be, but Arcane is. Yeah. Well, I definitely, like I said, I was familiar with your guys' studio, but this definitely, definitely put you guys on the map. But it's always neat when you have a client who's putting this much trust into you to just knock it out of the park. Yeah. And it, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Not for only sure. meet their expectations, but just to exceed that. There's a lot of trust that's been put into you guys for this. And yeah, you guys yeah. just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And, and, but they, they trusted 
us because they've seen the results of right. what those guys have been, you know, doing. And, and yeah, it's it, to me, I'm, yeah, it's a dream. And it takes all the, you know, when you, when you think about a show and what you want out of that, but I was saying at the beginning, it takes all of those things. It's like, it's for adult. It's a drama. It's uh, cool characters. It's beautiful. It's graphic. It has 2d uh, feel to the effects. It's like everything. Any of those is actually something that, uh, the storyline, the characters, how right. they're developed, the designs, the everything is like wow, 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 wow. So, so, <laughs> so, and 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 um, yeah, and so 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 for sure, the show was going to work. But I'm super happy with how it's been received because yeah. sometimes I, I thought like, well, maybe people are not going to see it because it's uh, too adult, and then kids are not going to watch it, so then it's not going to have any audience. And this was our fear, my fear as a somebody that's been uh, working at, uh, in California for more than 15 years, but right, I think right. it's not the case. I think there is a place for a more adult animation. Like Alberto Mielgo is doing is, is, is much, it's even more adult than what we're doing at Fortiche, but this kind of animation is what I think uh, animators and artists are, are thriving for and right. wants to work on and, and that people are loving. And, you know, and so, um, and the other the other side of that same coin, though, I could see where there, the concern would be that there are some adults who wouldn't want to watch it because you're like, well, that's the animation. That's you know, yeah, exactly. You know, like the, my girlfriend's mom, she never watched animation, so I've worked on it. She's so she watched it. She's like, I would have never watched it, but it's it's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, could. <laughs> yeah, she would never watch that. You know, right? So right. I think that's that's why I was a bit afraid of. But I think it's got such a fan base, League of Legends. So yeah, yeah, that's done really well. Really so now, well. just out of curiosity, because like I said, you've been you teach multiple workshops here at iAnimate. You've been doing this for quite some time with us. Um, I forget how long has it been. It's probably we. Been, almost 10 years okay because we've been open for 11 i knew uh, yeah so really it's like close. yeah maybe nine years this far yeah, yeah real close has um has this uh, um changed how you look at teaching now and i and the reason why i say that is because i go you're in a different position than you were at dreamworks you know you're you're leading a, a, a branch of this studio here in animation you've had artists that you've developed hired now there has has this de affected your your teaching and how yeah, you look at sure. it okay for sure so? i think i teach well i'm first i'm trying to be a very good teacher for the students um how, it feels like i'm gonna sell my uh like um try to sell my class but it's not the case is really i've i think i've learned a lot in helping others in understanding a way to actually okay here at montpellier i've hired only juniors like my whole team, 20 animators. I have my leads that are very, mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of background, but for the, they're all juniors. So gotcha. I taught them the way that I animate a uh, certain workflow, a certain way of moving things. I want them to use a ref to do it this way. And, and by doing that, it allows me as well to reflect on the classes, and the way that I teach and to try to help them get the most out of those 11 weeks in how can you get actually good at animating in such a short time, but by developing very good habits. And, and so I think, yeah, I've been maybe a bit more, um, is, is as well for animate. I'm trying to find different ways for, to help them during the week. Um, I'm using sync sketch a lot where I give them annotation when they send me their shot during the week and the midweek while, while the reviews, I'm trying to be present constantly like that with them via emails and stuff. So I reply. So, and I show them in their scenes. And so I'm trying to be really, uh, what I've been doing is I've been listening as well to what they wanted from, I think it's been five years or so that are starting to ask my students after each class, I do a little review, one-on-one -on -one review with them. And I'm like, dude, what it is that I need to change in my class so that you would have enjoyed it more or that I could do to make it better. And they tell me, uh, um, like, um, I, now I have a Dropbox where I put my videos so that they can scrub through it so that they can actually play it on their site too. Um, I've, I'm doing that sync sketch thing where I give them the annotation during midweek uh, I'm being there present for them 24 hours. I'm going in their Maya scenes and I'm saving a play blast so that they can see. It's just thing that they're been saying that it really helped them, helpful, or that they yeah. really like. 
and I'm trying to push for that. I think it's because of those uh, nine years that I'm getting better at it. But gotcha. At the beginning, I think it was rough. I mean, uh, the, the the quality of the work that my student did, I'm always super happy. Oh, yeah. I have some very good shots coming out of those classes, but uh, I think at the beginning it was much harder because I, I was coming out of Guardians and I had a very specific mindset on animation. I was very young and I thought it was only realistic, very close to the reference, but it's not the case. We There is a lot of range in animation and we can do a lot. So yeah. now I'm trying to be more into what they want to do and trying to, to guide them to, so that they can have something to put in their reel that is looking really nice so that they can get hired in one studios. I think at, at the end, the goal is that, you know, is that plus the making it a very uh, good workflow and habits because um, I think it's, it's the key to having a good polished shot is that it's habits and how you animate and animate the same way for a long time. Uh, that's also a problem sometimes is people, they jump from one workflow right, to right. another, to this, to this, and then it becomes a very, very complicated. Gotcha. Well, for those that are listening, one of the really cool perks that we have here at iAnimate um, for those who are, are graduates is that you have continual access to uh, our, our site. And that's one of the things, <laughs> the only reason I'm bringing that up is not as necessarily a plug, but I'm going, I want to go watch some of your videos because I go, I want to see how you're doing that. And this allows artists or, or alumni graduates to kind of come back and keep watching, Exactly. you know. Um, me, me, I tell my student, go watch the, the other uh, teacher's video. You're going to learn a lot in those. I yeah. think that's awesome that I animate when you're in one class like this, you can watch the, the other guy class and this, this class too, you learn a lot. So you yeah. don't have uh, only access to your teacher, but also to the other ones so that you can see uh, what they're actually, how they're teaching, what they're telling their students, etc. cetera. Yeah. What I tell them is don't start to go on very different workflows. Right, if you want to right. try stuff, if you hear stuff, I'm more than happy to talk about it because there is always a reason why somebody would use a different workflow, different ways of working. It's not the wrong way. It's just a different way. There right. is tons of ways. After me, I think I found something that doesn't feel too complicated for people to understand and to actually being able to produce some good work uh, with the redundance of that. Well, workflow is always a challenging thing. So that's why I said, I want to go watch your videos. I want to <laughs> pick, pick your brain there by watching that. <laughs> it starts in week zero. I actually send an intro video. So that's another thing that I do. I send an intro video before the class. I did see that. know yeah. what I want for them to do and show them how it works. Yeah. And that's one of the other things too, I really enjoy about our program is the flexibility that we give to each of our instructors. You know, um, we're not accredited, We, but the nice part about that is it allows us to be flexible to, yes. to be very dynamic in that, you know. So And, it, and that's really cool is, is because like that, the students have also a very dynamic relationship with their teacher. Yeah. You know? And depending on the teacher, they will get different things, but are really cool. I think it depends on the, of, uh, yeah, of that. But I, I really like that, actually. I really like the fact that um, some teacher will actually uh, taught a certain way that's going to make you learn a lot about acting, or the other one is going to be teaching you a certain way where you're going to learn about workflow and this. It's, it's just, it depends, but it's really cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, Lexi, I know uh, we're probably going about an hour and a half here. Uh, I don't want to take any more of your time. <laughs> I would love to get in another conversation with you at some point, but really congratulations to you and the team there, uh, Thank you. Uh, Fortiche, and um, tell them congrats from uh, one more. I'll have to text you. Hey, great job. <laughs> <One more laughs> <more there. laughs> but no, this is really, really remarkable. And I, awesome. as you kind of mentioned beforehand, this checking off all the boxes, um, that's a neat project to be able to have had worked on so um congratulations yeah, I'm, to you guys I'm so there. happy when i when i saw those sequence i knew that if i turned that down i would be always regretting it today if i didn't i would be <laughs> and i know actually some of the guy some of some people that i wanted to hire who never really made it and lately they've been like you have more space i'm like oh sorry no, it's no more. but um yeah actually think talking about this is like right now in animation at 40s there is like uh, we are full uh there's a lot of people asking obviously but uh we we my the teams working on season two were already starting quite a, a months, a few gotcha. months back. gotcha gotcha uh, well, we're glad to have you as one of our instructors to be able to teach uh, our students. So thank you very much. Thank you. But thank you actually, I animate as well for, for the opportunity to be able to teach. Uh, it's, uh, I love the, it's a great school. I love the rigs. I love the way that I'm able to actually teach um, the way that I want for the students. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's a really cool school. And um, 
And yeah, thanks for having me. Workshops, definitely. Yes, definitely. <laughs> thanks for having me, Larry. Yeah, it was a awesome. pleasure to see you again. It's been a you while. Too. Absolutely. All right, and with that, we're out. All right.